The stories you're about to hear are the stories that an old friend of mine shared with me long ago. They are true in the sense that they are my personal accounts to events leading up to the final story and why I started to believe that he could see ghosts. My friend Kane. I had a friend in high school named Kane that swore he had the sixth sense. Now usually you would just make fun of your friend for saying stuff like that. But Kane just wasn't that kind of person to joke that way. He was a solid, credible guy amongst anyone that knew him. So we were sitting in my room one day, after school just talking, when he decides to tell me something in confidence that still to this day, when I'm all alone at night, has me second guessing if I'm actually alone. So Kane tells me that whenever he goes home from school, he says hi to his mom and chats a bit. But before he enters the hallway to his room, he stops and looks up to the far right corner of his ceiling to acknowledge the entity clinging there. He explains that the brief acknowledgement is simply to show appreciation. The thing that is up there, looking around, is the home's guardian. Because long ago, what you call your home right now used to occupy a space and time where someone died, and that spot became its home. And it's always there, watching, protecting the house from any evil spirit that tries to occupy it, which you can say is a good thing. And then Kane goes and tells me that every house has one. And as he and I are sitting in my bedroom, he looks up to the corner of my ceiling, holds a brief gaze, and says to me, Yours is right there. So to you, the listener, glance up to a corner of your house sometimes, and if your home's guardian happens to be there, it may appreciate your appreciation. Except, if it's a bad one, because they don't like being seen. I would lose touch with Kane after high school, briefly reconnecting a few years later, and then losing touch again as life takes over as it does. I've always known him to have a big heart, especially for children. I would hear through the grapevine that he got into the medical field which suited his personality well, I felt. And he even took in a few kids from troubled homes. That's the kind of guy he is, and I felt I needed to tell you this before I begin this next story. Kids in the Cupboard He said that there are mischievous kids in his house. They like to play hide and seek in his kitchen cupboards, slamming the top and bottom doors as they chase each other around. They are Native American kids. In fact, they are the ghosts of Native American kids, whose village was probably destroyed during some battle they had nothing to do with, the truly innocent casualties of war. Kane says that he just sits and watches them sometimes. He never interrupts them, because they're just kids. They never knew what happened to them. All they wanted to do was play. So just let them play. Leg Lake One night, Kane and his cousin were driving down Rosemead Boulevard past a long stretch of park called Leg Lake. There were no other cars around, and the lake to their left looked exceptionally creepy in the dark. So his cousin thought it would be funny to slow the truck down to a snail's pace to scare Kane. And it worked. Kane grew more and more uneasy, turning to his cousin, giving him a few nudges, pleading with him to drive faster, that this was not funny. But it was futile. His cousin just laughed. Anxiety within Kane grew, so he leaned back in his chair and just stared forward because he knew something was already at his window. He didn't want to, but he turned his head to look towards the lake and a pale white female was pressed up against his window, moving in stride with the truck. Kane let out the most guttural scream, which in turn scared his cousin into stepping on the gas and they peeled off, both eyeing the rear view. But it was nothing but darkness. His cousin asked him, what in the world made you scream that way? And with tears in his eyes, Kane said that he just saw the ghost of a girl whose body was somewhere in Leg Lake. Okay, so 
I felt like I should jump on the camera for this one because it'll give it a little bit more, you know, uh, it probably feel a little bit more genuine because this part of the story I could actually vouch for that it is true because it happened to me. You know, everything else is Kane's stories, but this is my story. And this is the part where, you know, I start to believe that it, Kane might have saw a ghost that night. Okay, so because... Me and my friend, we were driving down Rosemead Boulevard. If you're from California, you guys know where it is. Leg Lake, you guys know where it is and how creepy that place is at night. Anyways, so we were driving down that road in the middle of the day. And it it started to have traffic. Like, it started to slow down. And that's very odd, you know, for that time of the day. But eventually, we got to a point where we could actually see what was going on in the lake. Now, from distance-wise, from the street to the lake, you know, there, there, there's quite some ground to cover, but you could still see clearly what's going on. And there was a police dive team out there, and they were clearly pulling out a body <laughs> from the lake. And they already put a tarp over it. From what I recall, it was a white tarp. I don't know, whatevers. But uh, they were pulling a body out of that lake. I turned to my friend, and I said, holy fuck. Kane just told me that. There was a body in that lake, like just a couple of days ago, like the, like he had seen a ghost. He had seen the ghost of the girl. And um, me and my friend just went about our business that day. You know, <laughs> in hindsight, maybe we should have thought more about it, but we were just kids. You know, we're talking about like 16, 17 year olds, you know. And we were going to go buy some shoes at a bazaar, you know, fake, fake knockoffs and stuff like that. But anyways, and I talked to Kane after and he's just, you know, he'll just reiterate the story. And every time he told me these stories, he is so serious. You know, you guys have to be there and see that he believes in these things. And now I'm going to tell you guys something that makes me believe this is this is part of heritage you know hereditary because it's not just him you know he he has that you know that he can read into that frequency of ghosts or whatever's but his mom has dreams okay and this is kind of fucked up okay don't call the police okay because you guys can't get nothing on me these days but my family used to run a gambling <laughs> ring of some sort i say some sorts because my mom would take in calls for numbers and people would bet like they would bet you know like those three numbers in the lotto you guys know what i mean pick three or whatever they're called and they would and they would and she would take those numbers kane's mom knows my mom okay she has a dream about three fucking numbers and wipes my mom out as, you know, basically the dealer. She literally wiped my mom out of this little side gig that she was doing. It wasn't much, but it was something to pay the bills back in those days, right? So, so she hit it right on the dot whatever those three numbers were i can't remember but i remember my mom complaining about it that this bitch <laughs> dreamed of three numbers and fucking took all the profits for like how many months who knows right so that's all i have to tell you guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this hey it's halloween this is my real story to jump start it all and uh yeah if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. This channel is going to be fun, okay? I'm going to read a lot more scary stories. I like to write stories myself and uh, a lot of true crime. That too. Check out the true crime if you haven't seen it and put a lot of work into it. So give it some love, thumbs up, subscribe, yada, yada.